The Indus looks nothing like the mighty river from history books. As a sandstorm sweeps down from the dunes, obscuring the river with its haze, a fisherman turns away and says what everyone fears in Pakistan, the desert is coming back. This quote has been an inspiration to me. A desert slowly encroaches on one of the world's great rivers, while those who live and depend on it are helpless to do anything about it. Now, I've been interested in science since I was small. When I was six, I became fascinated with sharks and marine biology, something I still love to this day. When I was in grade seven, I had to choose a subject for a science fair project. At the time, I wanted to work on something important, and I became inspired to do something about the global water crisis. Even though that year, the UN declared access to clean water and sanitation as a human right, the realities of the issue were shocking. Realities including oh, almost one billion people lack access to sufficient clean water. And by the year 2050, global demand will exceed supply by 40%. Those most affected are the world's poorest. Water scarcity results in people having to travel long distances, even up to six hours a day just to obtain water, a burden usually borne by women and children, and it dominates their lives. We all need a minimum three liters of water a day for basic survival. And because of these worsening shortages, conflicts have already occurred, and it's predicted that future wars in this century will be fought over water. I looked at the lack of water availability and infrastructure in areas suffering from potable water shortages. And this made me think about the atmosphere. Now the atmosphere contains 1.84 million liters of water per capita. This is a body of water that doesn't recognize borders. And aside, aside from the highest and driest places in the world, there is a large amount of water vapor in the air at night. Now at night, when the air temperature cools, water in the air condenses into its liquid state, what we refer to as dew. After investigating, I found that there was no practical technology that replicated this process. And so I decided to try to create a device which could capture some of this water, reproducing the process of natural dew formation. Now, it was very important to me that whatever I would create would have to have no adverse effects on the environment. And so, my vision was to create a device which could extract water from the air, and that does not require any existing infrastructure, electricity, and had no running costs. So I started when I was in grade seven, and I'm still working on it today, using my house as a construction site and a lab and my garden for field testing. I started by designing simple structures which have a high surface area and are shaped to allow water to flow off them. And I tested them in the humid air coming from my clothes dryer, an area also beloved by my cat. And so for my next project, I modified the designs. I tried some new and some ancient techniques for improving the flow of air through the condenser. I used the old idea of wind catchers, structures which utilize prevailing winds to naturally ventilate houses in Iran. Now, all of this gave really interesting results, but I still did not obtain water from air in a natural setting. I realized that there were reasons why this hadn't been done before. It's difficult. And so, I had to rethink everything. And I designed and built completely different condenser devices. Now, dew does not occur every night. And so if a device relied on the natural rates of dew formation, it wouldn't obtain water from the air very often or in useful volumes. And so my aim was to enable the conditions required for dew formation to occur in the, in the condensers much more frequently than natural. Now, in natural processes, as the air temperature cools, 
a point is reached at which water vapor condenses. When this occurs along a cool surface, dew forms. And so I knew to achieve my aim, I had to increase the cooling rate of the condensers. Now, this is pretty easy if you use electricity. However, it becomes significantly more challenging to achieve this without it. So to solve this problem, I utilized a natural cooling rate. During the day, all objects heat, by absor heat up by absorbing radiation from the sun. And at night, re uh, release this heat by radiating it to the sky. And so I designed components for the condensers that increase their rate of radiative cooling. The result was that the condensers were able to cool to the dew point, the temperature at which dew forms for up to 12 and a half hours without electricity. Now, this wasn't enough to make it work, however. I still needed some way of, of inducing continuous airflow through the condensers, as natural air movement isn't reliable enough for this. And so, I designed the condensers so that air will flow through them independent of airflow in the environment. Now, this left me with one final problem to deal with. I had to devise a means to ensure the flow of water from the surfaces of the condenser. Since I wanted this to work without electricity, this had to, um, then doing this by mechanical assistance wasn't an option. And so I turned to nature for an answer. Now, water flows rapidly off the surfaces of lotus leaves, keeping them dry. And so I treated the condensers with a substance similar to lotus leaves. And this allowed both condensation and water flow to occur. So this is what the overall device looks like. And the result was that it was able to produce drinking water from the air at night in the natural setting. Now, as I worked on this project, I, it became less about science fairs for me and more about trying to design a solution to help those suffering from potable water shortages. As I progressed with this work, I found that water scarcity is only part of the issue. There are 2.4 billion people in the world who lack access to adequate sanitation. Five years after the UN's declaration for clean water and sanitation as a human right, over one child dies each minute from drinking contaminated water. Throughout the course of this morning's TEDx session, 240 children will have died from preventable water-related diseases. Estimates of water-related deaths over the next five years range from 20 to 40 million people. And so, because of this, I decided to expand the scope of my devices to allow them to produce clean drinking water from contaminated water as well. Again, running free of electoral requirements and running costs. Now, there is a device that's been around for a long time which performs this function, and it's called a solar still. Now, a solar still is essentially a box filled with contaminated water over which rests a sheet of glass. And during the day, it absorbs solar radiation, causing the water to evaporate. And in this process, organisms are killed. Although they avail of a free energy source, solar stills are not widely used because they don't produce enough water, which is a shame because the areas suffering most from water contamination have abundant sunshine. And so I designed an improved solar still. This allows for evaporation and condensation of large volumes of water. And it was able to produce clean drinking water from contaminated water by removing all bacterial, chemical, and physical contaminants. Now these devices could be used to provide drinking water to remote communities, to supplement urban supplies, or provide fresh water in disaster situations. Now, when I started this work, I didn't have any initial experience, and I, there were a lot of challenges along the way. The challenges of having no mentor or test facilities to work with, as well as the technical challenges. 
But I succeeded by being resourceful and persistent. Piece by piece, I learned about the science and about soliciting materials from providers, some of whom were very helpful and some of whom were not. But through this process of discovery, the complexity of the work increased, as did my understanding. Now, I haven't reached the end of my journey yet. However, my work so far has showed that devices can be created which, when placed in the middle of nowhere, without any electrical source, can produce pure drinking water. And so, when I started, I had the ambition to do something about a major issue. But my original idea was very simple. It all started by testing the small devices and, in, and outside in the middle of a Canadian winter using the humid air coming from my clothes dryer as a test facility. Because it had never been done before, whenever there was a setback or results weren't what I seemed or had hoped for, it seemed like an impossible goal to achieve. However, I didn't let that deter me. And now from that simple, small idea, a potential big solution may be emerging. And so what I've learned is that any idea, no matter how small or what its origin, has the potential to become so much larger. And so if you have an idea, do not hesitate to pursue it. It may unlock mysteries, provide a solution to a problem, or enrich our collective understanding. You'll never know until you take your first step, and then you'll realize that you can take many more. Thank you.